This video documents Dan and I changing out my Hank on sales system for a new roller furling system thanks to Rolly Tusker sales. We're gonna try to put together an 11.7 meter forestay on my eight and a half meter boat. We swap out the forestay on anchor, puzzle through adapting the new forestay onto my boat, and get it all installed just days before we're scheduled to leave Australia for Indonesia. For my regular viewers, this video jumps ahead of my current schedule by a few months, so please buckle your seatbelt, sit back, kick up your feet, and allow yourselves to float freely in this four-dimensional wormhole. So I just got back in touch with Sven from Rolly Tasker Sales because I am going roller furling. After a lot of years of having a hank on head sail and there are a lot of pluses to it but mostly there are more pluses to roller furling sails so he reached back out to me and said that they will sponsor me a new roller furling sail and the forest day and then they're going to work out a deal with Harkin for me to get a furling drum at a low cost. The first thing I need to do is measure the forest day from pin to pin and get that measurement back to him. And this is the folder that I kept when I was doing my boat overhaul in Maine and I think it's in here somewhere. Here we are. So what I did for my rigging was I bought a big spool of wire and I measured everything out and I had two different size turnbuckles, some from my old boat, some that I found in a marine salvage store, and then a couple different sized, I used stay lock fittings for terminating them. So I had to measure all of that out because I needed to get the exact lengths for the shrouds for the standing rigging. So it was the length of the shroud and then I had to take into account the stay lock fittings on either side as well as the turnbuckles. So this is I'm trying to make sense of this. And then this was my chart that I made for measuring everything out. So we have four stay, the raw length. I think raw length is probably the length that has to be total. And then taking away the termination, so then I made abbreviations, and then each termination has its own length, and each turnbuckle has its own length, so that I could calculate the actual length of the wire minus all of these things. Days finally arrived. My freeling drum is out of Australian jail. Um, <laughs> I sprung it for a bail of $500. Even though I'm a yacht in transit, and this is a boat part that's being permanently affixed to my boat, the Australian government um, refused to listen to their own rules and I had to pay 500 bucks to get it from customs which I will get back but it was just annoying. Here is the furling drum. Oh it's beautiful. Give her a spin. The first thing we're gonna do is just double check that we did the measurements right so we're going to measure the new force day with its little toggle and make sure that everything fits. So Dan's gonna haul me up the mast, not with the forestay, uh, just with this sort of feeder line. And then once I get to the top, I'll pull the forestay up. I'm not gonna take off my current forestay until we're ready to do this swap, just because of it's the rolly anchorage situation. Oh, she's ready to go. <laughs> she's rearing. Are you rearing? I am very excited. The moment of truth. Nervous excitement. Nervous anticipation. It's hard to tell because we still have the old four stay in, and, it, and the old four stay is obviously super tight. So I, who knows if by the time we put it in and tighten up, if we have any turn buckle left. On the initial measure, it was a little bit tricky to see if the force was going to fit because obviously it's a very exact fit, um, which means that you kind of need to be able to tension it up in order to see if it's going to fit. So initially it looked like it was going to be too long. It ended up not being too long, but we went through a moment where we thought it wasn't going to work. What's cool is when we're working together and it goes wrong, when stuff goes really wrong, we sort of pull together as a team, which is cool. Those are the times that we're there for each other. Dan has gone to buy some bigger drill bits um, because one of the tasks that I have to do is drill out the tang because the new 
uh, forest day is a little bit bigger. And I chatted with Mikel about this and he said that I sent him photos of the tang and he said that it's fine, I can drill it out and it won't uh, hurt the structuralness of it. So that's this guy right here. These holes are just slightly too small. Uh, and we just realized that we're gonna have to actually take the whole thing off to drill it out because um, otherwise we'll drill it at an angle, which we obviously don't want to do. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is start setting up the line so that we can take the forestay off. So luckily, I just set up this inner forestay the other day. This goes up more than three quarters of the mast, so that's going to be a really good start. So then I'm also going to use a halyard and bring it down, well, <laughs> I was gonna bring it down to here, but I actually can't because we have to take this off. It just ever so slightly hits the back of this, but I think that's okay because this is flexy. So the first thing we're gonna do now that we have everything ready to support the mast is slack off the tension on the backstay. So my backstay has this cool little winchy doodle bottle and it's gonna move out of here. So we're just gonna put a, tape, a piece of tape around here so that we have that as a point of reference. That's Let's probably ask. good. Yeah, probably, hey? I mean, that's yeah, loose as now. That's cool. very loose. In the process of tightening this and this, the four stays actually pretty loose now, which is a good sign. It means that these are doing their jobs. Okay, the four stay is off. Can we just have a peek inside here of what you're doing? Yeah. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, really. We're in the anchor locker. This is the, the plate. There's three bolts on the back. They're actually coming out quite easily. Though. So we have this thing up. It's actually a lot beefier than it looked when it was on. It's a pretty solid thing. All right, I'm getting ready to go up the mast. Oh, and for the first time ever, ever, ever in the history of being myself, uh, I'm using a head mount for my GoPro. It came with the GoPro. I've always thought they were kind of silly, but wait. It's the perfect thing because it's hands-free. Look how cool I am. And this way I don't have to deal with the GoPro while I'm up there dealing with everything else. It feels very precarious on my head. Okay, I'm at the top of the mast. Uh, so the first task is to get this guy off and lower it down to Dan. This is a current forest day. All right, so the problem is that... Let me come on to the sunny side. Um, so this is forks, which is great for this attachment because this is just a loop but the top of the new forest day is also forks. So when you're getting an old cotter pin out, I always like to use wire cutters because they just grip really well. And then um, I like to grab and then torque against whatever the thing is that I'm pulling out. So I just hold here and then the front pushes against there and it just kind of pops it out really easily like that thing. All right, now I think I'm gonna tie this off first because once I get the pin out, that's gonna wanna fall down. All right, just switched this to super view mode. Uh, so I've just tied this off here and then I'm gonna tie it to this handy little loop. So getting this pin out is actually gonna be impossible. No, I'm gonna have to take this off with the four stay attached because there's nowhere for this pin to go. Cool. Probably shouldn't have taken that pin out. Yeah, <laughs> definitely shouldn't have taken that pin out. Oh. <laughs> Definitely shouldn't have pushed it out. Shoot. All right. I see why they recommend that you do this with the mast off. Now the cotter pin is actually buried inside of this gloop, which just makes things even more exciting. So I'm just gonna see if I can force it out. That's out. Maybe I can stuff it in here just to keep this pin from falling out. It's just one less thing to think about. No, I don't have to worry about that pin. So this is still tied on. That's connected to that. So all I have to do is get this pin out. This whole thing will fall down a bit. So I just need to think about holding onto the pin. Let's see if it wiggles. Nope. So I'm just gonna try to take some tension off the forest, hey? See if I can wiggle this guy out. 
Otherwise, I'm gonna need a drift. Oh, I might need a drift. Okay. Being up at the top of the mast without a forest day is an interesting feeling. I just am um, having Dan send me up a hammer and a drift. Um, yeah, I mean, I do feel pretty confident in the fake forest days that I've made, but it's still something to think about. It's a bit rolly up here, but not too bad. Um, ooh, and you can see the fix that my dad and I did when the Windex fell off in French Polynesia, we fixed it with JB Weld and uh, attached it back together. Ooh, Gek looks tiny and fisheye. This is me. I'm gonna do the gratuitous up the mass selfie. <laughs> so Dan sent everything up in this bag with the idea that I could try to tie it under here somehow to catch the pin so I can just hammer it out without worrying, which is a very clever idea. So here's my tools. We're just using the end of this as a drift because we don't actually have a drift. This is all getting very tricky. Right, so first I'm just gonna position the bag. I don't really know if it's gonna work or not, but I'm gonna do try all that. Or it'll just deflect the pin so that it falls at a very exciting. But you know what I should actually do? Is just tie off the end of the pin if I had a rope that was smaller than this one, that would be easier, but... Oh, no, that might work. Haha! It worked! Look at that! <laughs> okay. Enough glue loading. This should pull out. There we go. It's all nicely tied off. The goal in your left is to not drop anything. Make a hole in your boat. <laughs> or kill the person underneath you. Tie this off here. Now we undo this. Oh no, but I need, hang on. I need this. A hole. Well done. Thank you. How's the rest looking? This is at the top of the mast, shaped like this, and so those are the same size. That's really annoying. I've concluded that I just need to go down and try to figure out how to do this next step because I I'm having a hard time thinking up here. <laughs> it's really rolly, my legs are losing circulation, so I'm just gonna lower this guy. The next challenge we're facing is that the for the new forest day basically has a little tang shape on it that's the same exact size and shape as a little tang shape on the masthead fitting. Uh, and so what we're going to have to do is have a new piece manufactured that goes between the masthead and the new forest day. We are drilling out these holes and it's super annoying. We're borrowing a friend's drill and uh, because it's really snaggy once you get to the bottom we've put this wrench to kind of hold it in place and then to keep it cool you should just like if you have a hose you can take it and drip water onto it but we don't have a hose so i just took this tray and filled it with water and submerged this guy in the water so it's just staying cool on its own without a hose and it's just salt water because that is free so here we go Today is the day that we're going to assemble the forest day. We're bringing it ashore to do it in the grass in front of the yacht club because it just seems way easier to do it on land. So Dan's getting our pile of stuff ready. It's gonna be a really hot day, but um, luckily we're working right on the beach. So we'll be able to jump in the water for little refreshments as we go. So we brought everything ashore to the yacht club, the Darwin Sailing Club. They seem pretty chill about us using their space, even though we're not club members. Beach is down there, boats are out there. Um, we just pulled the dinghy up on the beach. Tide's still going out for a bit and then it's spreading the forest day out on the grass here. Those are all the cockatoos. Uh, and we're gonna just start by sliding these foils on and getting a sense of uh, how much we're gonna have to cut off the top one. All right, in this little book that comes with the furler, they have this whole very mathy looking section. It's giving me drawbacks, not drawbacks, flashbacks 
to math class. But basically, you just fill in the charts that they have with all these different measurements and something magical is supposed to happen. So we are starting to do that, assemble everything up. And we haven't then, picked the flattest ground, have we? Yeah, we kind of picked a hill to do it on, but honestly it was the only option. We didn't want to do it on the cement because it's just going to scratch the foils. Uh, all right, we've reached an impasse today because we're still waiting on that adapter part to be made for the top of the force day. And bef until we can get that pin to pin measurement, we can't do anything else. We didn't realize that <laughs> it would come up so quickly, but we figured out the hardest thing is just measuring it. And then once it's measured, it's all very straightforward. So um, we have it all laid out in the grass. We're just gonna put it all away and bring it back to the boat. The adapter piece, people came back to us. Uh, they really hooked us up. We paid for Express uh, and they gave it to us a day early. So basically what the adapter piece is doing, and I have this tied with a string only because we're testing it. I'm not gonna do it like this ultimately, obviously. But once again in the afternoon, it gets really rolly in this anchorage. So Gek is just started on her daily roll and it makes going up the mast pretty terrible. Um, so up I go. So I've come down from the mountain. Um, the forest day fits, which is cool. Uh, the next thing we need to fill in this chart is the pin to pin length of the forest day. So yesterday I went to the top of the mast and attached up the forest day and we marked the turn buckle exactly where it needed to be to have the forest day at the right tension. And so what I've done is put the forest day, put the turn buckle back out to where it should be and then this parking lot has all these really handy tie downs for the boats so I'm stretching out the forest day between the tie downs to get it nice and tight and then I'm going to measure it. Okay this is all stretched out. Now I'm just going to start measuring. Since the tape measure only does three meter sections what I'm doing is taping each one off right on this line and then once the tape gets long, so it just turns into shape, it actually turns into a tab. Hooks onto the tab like so, and stops itself perfectly. And then I can straighten this guy out and get a really nice measurement. I'm gonna start cutting the foils to length. So we filled out this worksheet page. Um, we are gonna use four full foils, and then this chart is to calculate how much to cut off the top foil. Just a little side note for you guys, Harkin has a really awesome, very instructional step-by-step -step video on how to install this type of furler on your boat. So if you want more of that and less of the anecdotal version that I'm putting out, I've put the link in the description below. It really helped us. We watched it a million times. <laughs> That's my face. It wasn't meant to be my face. It was meant to be this. Oh, yeah. Sun is rising and the weather is good. It's taken me an hour to get Holly out of bed, but now there's a inkling of light. It's very calm and we're gonna try and get this, this, uh, I was gonna swear, but I'm not allowed to swear on camera, get this, uh, bad boy. this four stay up. I forgot the name of it too, so I'm just gonna call it f but I uh, can't say f Dan has cruelly forced me out of bed. You know why? Hmm. I'm so fancy! <laughs> brought me coffee in bed. Such a meanie. One coffee down. One more to go before I can start helping him. He's doing a really good job though on his own. <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> I move things from one place to the next. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been saying about this earlier the whole time? Oh it's like a Meccano set. Adult Meccano. Apart from a few more consequences if you get it wrong, I guess. Yeah, we usually have no wind and a still anchorage until at least 12 or one, sometimes two. So the goal is to get it up the mast before then. So it's gonna be really tricky. This whole thing is gonna be tricky. We're gonna try to put together an 11.7 meter forest day on my eight and a half meter boat. So we're gonna have three meters of extra. <laughs> 
We've laid the forestay out on the deck with the top of it by the bow and the bottom of it near the stern and we're starting by just sliding each foil on and slowly attaching it together. We did a dry fit of this on land where it was easier just to make sure that everything would go together nicely and it does. So now the challenge is going to be trying to get it together on a boat that's three meters too short but the first few are going to be pretty simple. You need to have 13 mils between the bottom of the termination and the top of the foils. So we're measuring that out and then putting on the top cap, which looks different from all the connectors. All the holes are pre-drilled except for the two top ones on the foil because those are the ones that you cut off. So we drilled those on land yesterday and now we are connecting everything up using the Loctite that came in the little kit that they sent with us. And this is officially the first termination connection that we are putting on to the air jigger. We've come up with a new method of sliding the foils on because everything is just too long so we side tied the dinghy and this line, this is the next foil, we're just leading aft over here and then into the dinghy and as we attach them on we're just doing one at a time because everything is a bit <laughs> volatile right now. So as we attach them together we're just going to slowly start pushing this out over the bow of the boat so that we have more room, room to work with because obviously we're working all the way down to the very end. This is the connector piece here. These are the connector caps and then we have the little bag of screws so we're going to come down to here. This guy goes over and then slides in until these are lined up with these and then you just watch through here until those holes come into focus. Pretty simple. Um, now we're just going to lock tight these little screwsies and screw them in. This guy is going to hook on... There's a flat one set. and a roundy one. Underneath. It's going to sit on top. I like that. that. And then this there encases it, it and then... Tight fit all the stuff and then just more lock tight and more screws. And that's kind of what we do the whole way down the line. We now have this thing sticking way out over the bow and I've tied the line up to our fake four stay just to kind of try to keep the load off of all these connections. So the one thing that I'm paying a lot of attention to because we're not able to lay it out flat is that I'm trying really hard to not get any twists in the wire um, because you know twist equals bad. Uh, so every time we pull one of the foils through I'm making sure that if the end wants to spin it will. It's a very stiff thing so it'll naturally want to get its twists out. <laughs> it does look like we're gonna be putting the drum on off the end of the boat, which is fun and exciting, but we'll we'll uh, deal with that once we get there. I think this is just a one step at a time thing. We're just figuring it out as we go. I just climbed the mast to the top and there's a little loop on the top of the masthead. I wound Dan's climbing line through it. So it goes through this, which is gonna be the top of the forestay, up through that little loop. And then we borrowed the blocks from this line and we've run it back to the cockpit. So now we have a way of lifting that guy all the way up to the top of the mast. We're at the assembling of the furling bit, which has to happen in the dinghy now <laughs> because we've run out of boat. Oh. Hey, you don't want me to get in there and hold something for you? Oh, I need a slightly bigger Allen key, please. Okay. Just getting these two started at the right time, hey? Yeah. Does this have an up and a down? Well, let me just put one turn on this, and then you put one turn on that, and then we'll start. Does it? All right, we have everything together, except we've left this slid up a bit so that we can attach the turn buckle. I'm just gonna try to do this really fast because this guy is sticking out over the bow, supported by the climbing rope, but it's just not a great situation. I'd like to try to keep the front as close to the mast as possible. So I'm gonna try to walk that back as far as I can. Basically there. Hey, hey, can you hold it? Yes? 
Cool. All right, I'm almost at the top of the mast. So now what I need to do is get this into here. Get this in. Oh, this guy wiggles a lot. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, that's in. Now, I'm just gonna come to the other side with this guy. She is on. All right. In. in. Lovely. Let me just double check. <laughs> this is in. Cotter pin is in. This is in. That's on. All right, looks good. Take me down. Cool. I'm down. She's connected at the top. What we've done is slid everything up higher so that we can now tighten the turnbuckle then we'll slide this connection down and put it in place once we have it tightened when you're tightening your turnbuckles it's important to remember to have something held on to the top bit of the stay you don't want to spin the wire twist the wires so you hold on to the top and the bottom at the same time okay i'm just tightening up these bolts Look at that. So this is all of it. This is the toggle at the end. It's not the right toggle for this setup, but the rigger said it's okay because we needed a singular one that would go into here. This is all connected. This is the drum. Spinny, spinny. The last thing I'm installing is the feeders for making sure that the sail gets in nicely. So that's just these little things. There they are. And what I really love is that they've engraved this little H for Holly onto both of them just to customize it for me. It's very sweet of them. Uh, one thing that I do love about Harkin products is that they have given me at least one extra, but sometimes three or four of every single, especially these guys, one of these screws because <laughs> they know sailors drop things in the water all the time. Okay, we have pre-wrapped the drum and shackled this guy on. Everything's gonna get split rings. This is the halyard at the top of the mast. Uh, not an ideal setup. Ideally, we would not just have a bowlin. <laughs> I don't really know. I'm gonna have to go up aloft and check that this is all okay, but this is just what I have for now, so whatever. I just did this wrong, so I'm gonna point out that it's important to remember to feed the, the bottom into the bottom part before you put this bottom shackle on because once that's on, you can't do this. That's it, Dad. Okay, we have waited until the next morning because there's never wind in the mornings to get this whole sail out on anchor. She's a beaut. Look at her. Look at her. We just have a couple more troubleshooting things to do with the furler. Getting the furler and the foils on and the stay and stuff, has it's all been a bit of a mission, but as soon as we got the sail on, it just fits perfectly. I was chatting with the sail people, um, with Sven, and I said I want the sail to clear the lifelines because I don't want to deal with it getting hung up, and I mean, it is just perfect. Look at that. As long as it can possibly be while well, it still nicely clears everything. Here's the bell pulpit. It's just really good quality, really good stitching. I have the black UV protection, which is important because it matches everything else. And then they've just done all this really nice reinforcing back here where the jib sheets go on. Um, yeah. I have telltales again. They came off my old sails. It's just really good craftsmanship, really solid, really nice, thick, heavyweight sail material. And I'm just, I'm so excited to take her out for her first test ride, but right now we're just trying to get a few more things working on this uh, furling drum. We're playing around. The test on my Rolly Tasker mainsail, the first time I took it out was when I sailed from New Zealand to Vanuatu. Um, we're planning on taking this one out for a spin before we leave Australia for Indonesia. If it was just the sail, I would just not even have to see trial it, but because we've put in this whole new roller drilling system, I do feel like I want to uh, try it out before I go. I thought I was done with my multiple times daily climbing aloft, but we are 
having some trouble with this clicking noise that's coming from the furling drum and we're not sure what it is. We've done a ton of troubleshooting and I'm just gonna go to the top of the mast and see if there's anything up there that looks wrong. <laughs> Okay. We tightened up the forestay as much as we felt comfortable. Before we put any of the roller furling gear on, we put the forestay on just raw and tensioned the whole rig to the same tension that it was when I had my hink on sails. And when we re-tightened the forestay, we tightened it to that tension. Uh, but once we put everything on, there was this funny clicking noise every time the drum turned around, so we tightened the forestay a bit more, but I was really worried about over-tightening my rig. I've never done anything with roller furling before. I realized that I didn't know what the correct tensions are for roller furling head sails, if they need to be tighter than hank-ons or not, uh, and we weren't sure if maybe the clicking came from some sort of a mistake that we made when we did it on anchor, so we decided that the only thing we could do uh, was to put the boat into a marina and take the whole thing apart and just make sure that we didn't mess anything up. So in Darwin, because there's 22 foot tides, all the marinas are a series of locks, well, just one lock, that you have to go through to get into the marina. A little more left, maybe, hey? Okay. We have the furler off again. <laughs> completely off the mast. So we got the forest day off, laid it down in the driveway. We don't think the problem is that there's anything wrong with the way we put everything together. We were really careful. So we finally had success today. We, um, what we discovered was that we didn't mess anything up by doing this on anchor, um, which is really nice to know. The problem, and I feel so silly for it, but everything we read said most problems originate in not having enough forestay tension. And I guess with the roller furling, you need so much more forestay tension than you do with hang-on sails that we got it tight and I was like, it's never been this tight before, this has to be the end. <laughs> because the Harkin foils have a flat edge to them on this side. They're not perfectly round. It was that flat edge that was actually hitting against the forestay. So um, we got lucky enough that we had a very friendly rigger come at the end of his day and help us for free, just with a bourbon and coke in his hand, kind of walked us through it all. Yeah, so we realized that we didn't have the forestay tight enough. It just needs to go way tighter on this sort of thing. This is our guru. Oh, <laughs> we're on air, are we? Nice <laughs> I would have done my hair. <laughs> All right. Yes, the man who saved us countless hours of work and hundreds of dollars in yeah, we'll see. rigor fees. <laughs> no, you did it. I just stood there and, and pointed. So. Also, good, good job. The All man right. to come after if something goes wrong. Yeah, yeah, don't blame me. Live. I blame it. It's your, your fault, right? Okay. Onwards and upwards. Enjoy. Camera. Thanks. Have a good one. So now I'm just picking from an eclectic assortment of fair leads to bring the furling line aft to the cockpit. We have two of these old ones from when Gecko had a furler when I first bought her. They're a bit chewed, but the top one is okay. So there's two of those. Um, I went into my rigging bag and found one of these. It's a single guy. It does have a bit of a ouch mark in the side and then also this little block here. Furler's on, furler's working. We'll test it tomorrow when we leave here. We'll just do a little bit of a sail around, but it's funny having the jib sheets permanently on the deck. I've never had this before on, on Gaffleton. And now we're just kind of tidying up loose ends. First thing we're gonna do after breakfast is tune the rig. Everything got a bit funky because we we changed the tension. There's more tension on the forestay now than the backstay, so the mast has come forward a bit, um, and some of the side shrouds just need to be adjusted. Um, so we're gonna do that first thing. Here's Gak with her new. This is just fresh, and every time I see it, it makes me so happy. The new Rolly Tasker furling head sail. It's so cool. I just like to stand here and stare at her. <laughs> A huge thanks to Rolly Tasker Sales for sponsoring me this beautiful new head sale, particularly Sven in the sale department and Mikel in the rigging department, who just helped me out with every question I had and completely hooked me up and also gave me the Harkin furling drum at cost, which was really amazing.
Thanks for following along on this journey. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. As I said at the beginning, this video is a bit of a jump ahead in my timeline, so now when I get back to regularly scheduled content, you can know that my days wrestling my Hank on head sale are numbered. Thank you so much to my patrons who are supporting me and making this trip possible. If you'd like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash windhippie, and for one-time donations, I have a PayPal, paypal.me slash windhippie, and merchandise, all in the links below. Thank you, Tish, for helping me get these videos up and scheduled. And thank you guys for your comments. I appreciate them all and your subscriptions. And I'll see you patrons next week with a snack. And YouTubers, I'll see you in another two weeks with another full-length episode.